This is the chemical equation that describes the burning candle. Balanced chemical equations work just like recipes in baking. They describe what you need to mix together and what you'll make. Instead of cups and tablespoons, chemical equations use units called moles. So this recipe says that if we react one mole of paraffin with 38 moles of oxygen gas, we will produce 25 moles of carbon dioxide and 26 moles of water. Chemical equations must obey the law of conservation of mass, which states that matter cannot be created or destroyed during a chemical reaction. We must have the same amount of atoms on each side of the equation. Chemical bonds will be broken and reformed, but we must still have the same total number of atoms. So in this equation, there are 25 carbon atoms, 52 hydrogen atoms, and 76 oxygen atoms on the left side. And on the right side, there are 25 carbon atoms, 52 hydrogen atoms, and 76 oxygen atoms. There's 50 oxygen atoms in the carbon dioxide molecules, and then there's 26 in the water molecules for a total of 76 oxygen atoms. So this equation follows conservation of mass. Oftentimes chemical equations are written as a skeleton equation, that is an unbalanced equation, and we need to balance them. Here's an example. This equation is unbalanced because the total number of each atom is different on the product side compared to the reactant side. There are two iron atoms, one potassium atom, three sulfur atoms, one hydrogen atom, and 13 oxygen atoms. There's one oxygen here in the potassium hydroxide, and then there are four oxygens in the sulfate but we have to times that by three because there's a three on the outside here. And so there's 12 plus one, which is where the 13 oxygen atoms come from. On the product side, there are one iron atom, two potassium atoms, one sulfur atom, three hydrogen atoms, and seven oxygen atoms. When we balance chemical equations, we can change the coefficients in front of each chemical compound, but we cannot change the subscripts. Right now, there are no numbers written in front of any of these compounds, so there's only one of each of them. If I were to put a two in front of the potassium hydroxide, that would double everything in that compound, and so there would be two potassium, two oxygen, two hydrogen. There are many ways to go about balancing chemical equations, but I'm gonna show you one of the quickest and easiest methods. Here are the steps. First, balance all of the metal atoms. Then, balance all of the non-metal atoms, except for hydrogen and oxygen. Then you can balance the hydrogen atoms, and then finally balance the oxygen atoms. Although oxygen will usually balance itself, which is why we leave it till the end. We'll start with iron, because iron is a metal. There are two irons here, and then only one over on this side. So I'm going to change the coefficient on this side to a two. Now that's going to double everything in this compound. So now I can check how changing that coefficient affected the amounts. Now there are two irons, there were three hydrogens, but now there are six hydrogens because we doubled the compound. There used to be three oxygens, but now there are six oxygens. And then we'll add that to the four oxygens over here, and that gives us a total of 10 oxygens. The iron atoms are now balanced on each side of the chemical reaction. We can move on to the other metal in this equation, which is potassium. There's only one potassium on this side, but there are two potassiums on the other side. I'll change this coefficient to two, and now that's going to give us two potassium atoms, two hydrogen atoms, and two oxygen atoms here, plus the 12 oxygen atoms over here for a total of 14 oxygen atoms. The metals are now balanced, so now I can move on to the non-metals, leaving out hydrogen and oxygen. There's only one other non-metal, it's sulfur. There are three sulfur atoms on this side of the equation, and just one sulfur atom on this other side. I'm gonna change this coefficient to a three. That's gonna give us three sulfurs on this side, but it also is going to affect the amount of potassium. It's gonna change it from two potassiums to six potassiums. It's also gonna change the number of oxygen atoms here from four to 12 oxygens, plus the other six oxygens in this other compound to give a total of 18 oxygen atoms. So sulfur is balanced, but notice one of our metals just became unbalanced. So I'm gonna go back to step one and balance the metals. There are now six potassium atoms on this side of the equation and only two on this other side. So I'm gonna change this coefficient from a two to a six. This now gives us six potassium atoms, six hydrogen atoms, and six oxygen atoms, plus the 12 oxygen atoms in this other compound for a total of 18 oxygen atoms. 
Now I can check to see if everything's balanced and I can see I have the same amount of each kind of atom on both sides of the equation. So we've balanced this chemical equation. Did you learn everything in this lesson? If you did, you learned that a balanced chemical equation works just like a recipe, only it uses units of moles. The compounds on the left side of the equation are called reactants, and the compounds on the right side of the equation are called products. You can balance any chemical equation by following these steps. First, balance the metals. Second, balance the nonmetals, except for hydrogen and oxygen. Third, balance hydrogen, and then balance oxygen.